Picking the correct strike price when selling options is key to maximizing your return, your overall long-term success, the amount of cash you put into your pocket every single month. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, how do you pick the strike price that you should sell a covered call or poor man's covered call option at? Let's get started. First and briefly, what do we mean by an option strike price? For call options, a strike price is the price at which the underlying stock can be bought or called away from the seller of that option at. This subject is the focal point of our discussion in this video. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I predominantly like selling options. My second most favorite strategy is to sell covered calls or poor man covered calls. So how do you go about picking the best option strike price to sell a covered call or poor man's covered call at? Here's the thought process that I go through when I'm selling a covered call option. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I almost always initiate a covered call position or poor man's covered call by selling put options. However, on occasion, I will initiate a covered call or poor man's covered call from the very beginning. If you are simply trying to pocket the absolute most time value premium possible when you do a covered call, then it's quite simple. You just sell the next highest at the money or out of the money call option. However, I think you'll agree with me that there are more factors to consider when selling a covered call option or a poor man's covered call than just time value premium. For example, we initiated a poor man's cover call in Microsoft back on August 27th. I won't go into detail here about the leaps call option that we bought because we're focusing on strike prices when we sell options. But let me talk you through my thought process when I enter this position. Here you see the daily chart of Microsoft on the date that we entered this poor man's covered call position. There are a couple obvious things I want to point out to you here. First, it's pretty obvious that Microsoft is in a very strong uptrend. When I enter a poor man's covered call position or a covered call, my goal is to hopefully ride the upward movement of the stock and benefit not only from selling covered call options against the position, but also from the stock's appreciation. That's one reason why I picked Microsoft to trade a poor man's covered call in. So the question is, what strike price and what expiration day should we sell a covered call option at? On August 27th, I did my best to calculate approximately how much Microsoft might appreciate over the next seven weeks, which would take us to the third Friday of October and the October 15th expiration date. I can see that Microsoft had been declining for about a week, but appeared to be starting to find a little bit of support, as you can see by the long legs on that day's candlestick. The bottom of the lake was also right at the previous wave's high. So I knew the odds were that most likely find support and consolidate for a while or potentially even move up in price. Of course, the opposite could also have happened. It could have declined in a big way from here. And the reason is that it was pretty far away from both the green 50 and the red 200 moving averages. But my goal is to try and sell a covered call option that would end up either right at the money or out of the money seven weeks later. To me, one of the easiest ways to do this is look for previous areas of resistance. Let's back up a time on this Microsoft daily chart and let me show you what I mean. Let's back up to the fall of 2020. Let's say that in October of 2020, we decided to do a covered call or poor man's covered call in Microsoft. The question would have been, what strike price should we sell the call option at? Notice that back in September, it reached a high of right around 240 per share. Now that Microsoft had dropped to around 200 per share, odds are that it was going to find resistance again at 240. So if we didn't want our covered call position to be caught away from us, a good area to sell a covered call or performance covered call option would have been around 240 per share. In fact, we can see here that over the next three months, Microsoft indeed went up and found resistance right around that area of 230 to 240 per share. Eventually it broke out as we can see here and an interesting point here. So we talked about places to sell put options earlier. Notice how Microsoft after breaking out above this former area of resistance where the yellow line is around 230 per share. Notice that once it broke through that area and advanced to 250 and then came back down and found support at that area of around 230 per share which had previously been its resistance. An important point to keep in mind when you're looking to sell put or call options is that previous areas of resistance once broken through tend to turn into to support. Conversely, previous areas of support, once broken through, they tend to turn into resistance. Unfortunately, when you look at newer, volatile, high-flying companies, although areas of support and resistance, they do come into play, it's more likely that those types of stocks will blow right past previous support or resistance. You can still use this technique. You just want to keep in mind that it's more likely that they may ignore the previous area of support and resistance because of all the momentum or the emotions that are driving the stock's movement. Now, going back to our Microsoft position, the problem we were faced with, and the reason why I wanted to share this position with you is because Microsoft didn't have any previous areas of resistance above it. So the question is, how can we make a good decision on where we should sell our covered call option strike price at if we want to minimize the odds of the calls being assigned while maximizing our profit potential from selling that option? In a situation like this, 
I like to do my best estimation based on recent history of how far I think this stock might move during the period that we're considering selling options in. I knew we had seven weeks until expiration, so I simply ran statistics and drew lines. I looked at how much Microsoft had advanced over the previous seven week period. If you went back seven weeks, that put us at July 9th. So the question was, how much did Microsoft advance over that previous seven week period? At the base of the arrow is July 9th. On that day, it was trading for around 279 per share. Seven weeks later, the day we entered this position, on August 27th, it was trading for right around $300 per share. So it increased 7.5% or about 1% a week during that time period. At that point, I wanted to see if this 1% per week price increase was something I should expect going forward or if it was more of a recent uptrend. So I went back to the longer term time frame chart and saw that Microsoft had been trading in a lower trading channel, but then it broke out above the trading channel and its increase in price accelerated. With all this information now in my mind, I realized there was a real possibility that if Microsoft continued this 1% per week price increase, it would end up around 321 at the end of our next seven week expiration period. I knew that if it was at 321, the 315 call option would be about $6 in the money. Since the premiums for a monthly covered call option was running about $5 to $8 per share, I knew that I should be able to roll the 315 call option up and out to 320, which would put the new short 320 put option I'd roll right at the money. I also realized that Microsoft was experiencing a decline and felt that it could continue declining to as low as 290, or maybe even the green 50 moving average, and that would give me more time for a 315 covered call option to expire worthless. Because of that, as you can see here, I decided to sell the 315 call option. For that, we were paid $2.41 per share. Now let me show you how this trade played out. Here you see the chart up to the day that we actually rolled this 315 poor man's covered call option out. At the base of the arrow on the left is where we entered the poor man's covered call position in Microsoft. At the point of that arrow on the right is where we rolled the position. As you can see, Microsoft went up and tested its previous high at 305 twice and after finding resistance there, it then began to decline. So on September 28th, we were able to buy the third Friday of October, 315 call option back to close it out for only 26 cents per share. And we simultaneously sold the third Friday of November call option and again generated a really nice cash flow. When selling cover call options, if you don't want the stock to be called away from you, but you want to pocket as much cash as possible, you're looking for the next higher area of resistance and you should sell your cover call options just above that area. Keep in mind there's always a possibility the stock will blow past your short cover call option strike price but the odds will be in your favor that it should find resistance at that area and will end up being a really profitable trade for you. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how we go about trading covered call options, check out the video series at the link above and description below entitled Covered Call Option Trading Explained with Real Life Examples. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.